Hey everybody, it's Brian from Team Aquascape. I'm sitting in my truck because it's drizzling outside a little bit and I figured this would be a better, safer place for me to get this video started. <laughs> hey guys, we got an awesome, awesome video this week. We got a lot going on. We've got a pond rehab, not really a pond rehab, a pond addition, not even a pond addition, a stream addition onto an existing pond. We didn't build the pond, but it's a cool little 30 foot stream, all hand sized boulders, no machine work at all. Get back to our roots, digging by hand, moving rocks by hand, breaking our hands, and we've got a fountain feature that we're going to be doing as well. So we've got a curbside appeal, we've got a cool stream, and then I think there's a little extra something in there for you guys too. You guys hang on tight. This is going to be so much fun. Here we go. We are going to build a pondless waterfall. The best way to learn anything is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. How's it going, everybody? Good morning. It is Jack with Team Aquascape. We are out here in Downers Grove, Illinois. And to be honest, I don't know what we're gonna be doing this project. Brian just simply told me to come out here and do a clean out, so that's what we're gonna be doing today. So let me turn you guys around and show you what I mean. So as you can see, we have an existing pond. This pond is definitely a couple years old. It was done by a different contractor. It was not done by Aquascape, but we've done some clean outs on it, and we've done some upgrades here and there throughout the years. But the homeowners want us to come out and kind of give it a true facelift. So we're gonna come out here. We're gonna keep the pond we're just doing a simple clean on it today we're gonna be pulling out these lilies repotting those addressing some of these edges some of these edge plants all along here we're gonna move all these fish into our fish tubs they're gonna be sitting up on the patio over there and then we're gonna do our simple power wash rinse and cover all the liner make sure everything's all nice and clean and ready to go but then we're also we're gonna be adding a skimmer that's gonna be sitting right here so we're gonna be moving this tree out of the way some of these plants putting a skimmer off to the side and then pulling out this negative edge so pretty much from this rock back all this is gonna get tore out and they're gonna actually putting a patio back here so it's gonna be a kind of a sunken feeling patio you're gonna be recessed down maybe a foot or two from the pond from this level here and that way it kind of gives that recessed feeling back here and that nestled look so we're gonna be pulling this out adding some of our chips that we have that we brought with us today and yeah and then we're gonna come up here we're pulling out this stream right here so all this stream is gonna get taken out this bio falls is gonna get moved to just up here somewhere up in this area here and then we're gonna have a nice meandering stream coming all the way into the pond going back behind this tree here with a bridge and a pathway so we definitely got our work cut out for us on this project but today our focus is to do the clean out possibly get the skimmer in and tack that basin so wish us luck and we will see how the day goes <laughs> We made quick work on ripping out this little stream. We're gonna pull this bio falls out and then we're gonna get this thing set just over here, right in this area. We're gonna set it roughly around, probably knee high, just a little lower than knee high. And then we're gonna start carving out our stream. So we're in good shape for today right now. It's only, I think nine o'clock. So we're making good work this morning. We got our basin in over there, ripped out and the chips are in. We just gotta get a little bit more chips, but we don't have any with us today. So once we go back to the shop, we'll grab another sack and then we'll be able to finish this off. So the demo is done. This is gonna be a fun, fun project. I'm just excited because it's such an amazing garden and this stream, I think the idea is the stream is really just gonna kind of connect more of the garden together rather than the pond just being part of the garden. The stream's gonna pull in a lot more of the space. So it's all one big cohesive thing. <laughs> so let's get this thing painted out. There's a lot of stuff going on. That gravel guys can go right into a wheelbarrow and get out of here. Yeah, we're gonna reuse it. <laughs> so we're moving the bio falls from over there to over here. They live on this patio and kind of look back at this area here. Key with this bio falls is just like any other bio falls. We have to set this to scale with the yard. Right now it's much too high. We'd want soil to come all the way up to here and we don't have that space. So I usually like to come in here, give the guys an idea, we'll probably dig that down to about there, getting that bio falls more like in this level. Which it's, roughly, I mean, what is that, 18 inches? If yeah, that's... it's still gonna give them a really nice sized waterfall. But rather than tall, you want it to look like it belongs here, right? And too many times we see the mistake of people setting it really high and then it's this big volcano, water splewing out of the top of it. There's all this rock set up on the sides and it just looks ridiculous. So set it to scale with the yard, I promise you guys. We're gonna dig this thing down. It's gonna look insignificant, but when we turn on the waterfall, it's gonna look amazing. Bring 
that stream right through this area. And if we look back this way, what I love about it is, well, and some of you guys that watch the channel know this, how much I love to create that mystery. So waterfall out of this area into a nice little pool close to the patio. Then the stream goes this way, disappears around this globe grew spruce over here by the goat's beard, kind of twists back around, giving us an unbelievable shape. Coming back in this way, and we're gonna get a bridge over the stream right here. And then there's a pathway that's gonna wire off that'll lead that way. So we're gonna do a new pathway for them that takes them back to what will eventually be another patio that sits back there. And then when I said it wise off, the rest of it will go this way, which goes over to a vegetable garden that they have back into that space over there. But we've got a lot to do in the next couple of days, but it's fun and that's why we like doing it. So the guys right now are finishing digging out the stream. We are 85% done. We're just have a little bit more to do up in the headwaters by the biofalls. But I wanted to take this opportunity to show you guys when we dig out our stream. So you see here, it's kind of hard for you guys to tell on camera, but this is pretty level all in through here. When we dig our streams, we always want to have a slight pitch back towards our waterfalls. Is when I say that is we have this is downstream and then this is upstream. We want to have that water kind of going towards that waterfall over on this side here. And the reason for that is in nature, you never see water hit a pooling area and then go immediately downhill it looks like it carved away into a pooling area and then just continue downstream so that's kind of what we're doing is imitating nature is that that water is going to dump into this pool kind of like it's going to erode away the gravel and then continue on down the stream so we kind of made some changes we actually moved that waterfall to over here instead of back there and that was a because of viewing angles and b because of the slope we'd not want to have a waterfall dump back in there where you're really not going to see it here you're going to see it every time you cross over this bridge so we're carving out that we're cruising right Right along it's a little hot out here everyone's sweating but i think we're in good spirits so a bunch of things going on biggest obstacle there used to be a giant locust tree here when i say giant like the branches went out over that went out over the garage covered this whole patio so it was huge and we're finding the remains and we knew we'd get into some of this stuff just not this much poor matt david and tyler have been picking at this thing forever and so right now we could pick at it for another two days and still probably wouldn't get to it it's just opening up another can of worms so what we're planning on doing is just smooth in this thing out as long as i can get things flat back in by the base of my bio balls and i can stack my boulders back in through there i think i'll end up beaching this section out and just letting gravel roll back into there it'll actually look cool it'll be kind of like a bird bathy type area tyler's shaving this down we can get that area about six inches lower than the top of my patio then no matter how much water backs up my edges will still be good so a little bit of finesse work in here the other thing we got going on is a bridge going in custom bridge that's right super custom getting this bridge in we love these bridges we use a one inch tubular steel get us up and over this it keeps a really really low profile this thing's a little over eight feet long but what i love about these low profile bridges is the low profile normally that would be a two by twelve underneath there this is lightweight and can support a ton a ton of weight on top of it so it's going to look super cool marking out some stuff now just to get some footings underneath this side and this side as you come across this there will eventually be a pathway that splits off goes this way and this way so some plants and some stuff is gonna have to change on this side. Some stuff's gonna have to change over there, but all part of the day. <laughs> I'm not always a fan of like a big arch bridge, but I think what I was telling Ron is that this bridge is the scale, not just with the project, but with the entire yard. And it just looks great. It also doesn't block the view of anything because there's a little Babbly Brook waterfall over there, the other big waterfall over there. And it's really going to invite people to come across this bridge and then eventually go to a gorgeous little patio that'll sit back in there, which will give another different view of this entire project. Let's rock this baby in. hot one it is super hot i don't know what's hot 100 degrees 150 feet i think it's 160 degrees outside <laughs> it is hot we're getting at it what i wanted to stop as i started to build this waterfall and i apologize one of these episodes i am going to take you step by step on how to build a waterfall but i would call this a waterfall for beginners and for a lot of you contractors out there this is what i want you to focus on simple waterfalls you can build simple waterfalls and build a bunch of them then later start playing around with twisting and turning and bouncing and v's and so on and so on but let
let me show you what I'm talking about. The other thing I wanted to show you is how high this waterfall ended up being. So here's how big it is. That's every bit of a 24 inch drop there by the time we dug out next to the patio over here. And here's what I mean with simple waterfalls. So we've got, just like always, a frame rock on one side, a frame rock on the other side. Master your frame rocks, really get those things into scale, not too much higher than grade over in here. And then you start working on your wing walls that go right and left, trying to match up joints as much as you can. Don't get over complicated. This is just gonna be a sheet of water coming out. I'm probably gonna even use a piece of slate, something similar to this, get it kind of cut in there. I'll get a nice sheet of water. Everybody loves those big, tall sheets of water. They create a lot of impact. They create a lot of visibility, especially even from further distances. They're so much fun to light up. I can get a light back behind that sheet of water, kind of creating a glowing chamber. I can put a light way out here, kind of coming back at it. A lot of times that light will bounce off of that sheet of water and put wavy marks all over a plant someplace else. There's just a lot of stuff you can do with it. So master those, keep building those, keep building those, get familiar with your stone, get familiar with the properties of the stone, get familiar with how to stack that stone, how to avoid stacking it. Notice that the only piece I have stacked in here is right in here. Well, it's kind of hard to see, but it's right in there. You won't even see that because of the sheet of water coming over the top. And then everything else is layered back. Like nothing is sitting on top of the next rock. You can kind of see that. So work on that. I'm going to keep messing around with this. Jack's going to start rocking out the rest of this stream, really trying to maintain those curves. And what I mean by that, you guys can see how this stream like wants to twist this way and then come back that way. All of my curves that come in towards the pond should be bigger rocks. So small rock back in here, Jack's going to get this rock set in there and then small rocks back in there. Then you can get choke points. The other thing that sounds weird, as we're digging it, we pretend we're the water. So what would the water do in an area back in here? As that water comes and twists back into here, it's eroded the way the soil. This side could be more landslide and rocky, forcing that water to create that curve back that way. push berms all set everything's in here you can hear the tone of my voice i'm pretty tired <laughs> stream looks great from here that's going to cut down that way disappear around that hydrangea and globe spruce there everybody's staying busy we're doing the final touches on lights and that stuff done this pathway is just about finished back that way we've started moving it back this way jack's got six seven more rocks to put in a little bit of gravel and we'll be done fire this baby up i also think the temperature has moved to 210 degrees <laughs> it's it's so hot. <laughs> if I lived in Arizona, I would quit. I just would quit. I wouldn't do this. That would take the fun building ponds for sure. Right now, the 210 is about all I can handle. <laughs> Ready? Oh, so nice. So nice. It looks so good, you guys. I love the pathway. I think we should give it a rinse. Yeah, let's give it a quick rinse and then let's fire this thing up. And for all of you people that don't know how to treat a pond crew, I know you're running away over there. Right. But grapes, strawberries, and watermelon go a long way. And pizza yesterday. Yeah. And pizza yesterday. Been taken care of. You want extra boulders placed in the front yard? We got you. Like, it's not a big deal. You don't give us pizza. <laughs> you move those boulders yourself. So the last thing we did, here's that simple waterfall we talked about. Big rack on one side, big rack on the other. I've got this piece kind of like cut in and around it. I say cut in, but it really just kind of fit in there. You've got your wing walls off to the left. You've got some bunch of rocks going on the right. And then the key, so that doesn't look like a big chimney over there, is we planted a ton of succulents in there. So we come back here a year later, all of those sedums of succulents are gonna be growing all out of those rocks, everything else. And then Ron and his wife are gonna do an incredible job just based off of the rest of their yard and planting the rest of that berm. But because I couldn't leave just a big giant drop alone, we did this little secret waterfall over here. And here's how we did it. So if I take this rock out, there's a pipe right there. That pipe comes out right there behind this guy. So hopefully when we fire this on, we get a little bit of water coming off of this, dropping into that pool and then coming this way, just so it's not so simple. And because I know how to do it, this rock here is actually going to be used like a ball valve. So I can put this in here and control how much water I want going in out of that pipe. I'm guessing there's good. We'll find out. So there's that waterfall. 
of its glory. And look at how big it is. I mean, it's plenty big. In fact, Jack, come over here and sit next to that waterfall. There's Jack to scale the waterfall. Seat rock and all. Looking great. Off this, so that waterfall is only 15 inches. There we go. Bio falls hidden correctly. Got the rocks up in there. Some rocks back behind it and everything else. That'll get planted up with some water hyacinth. And here's that secret little fall coming down off the side, giving us a lot of sound. Right behind that rock is that white pipe I showed you guys earlier. And so it just kind of comes down, cascades, cascades, then goes down through the stream, disappears over there. And then I'll show you my favorite part. I love the bridge. The bridge looks so great. They come across, lead us in over to, and we get another angle of this. You remember we talked about digging out that deep spot? So super simple little waterfall. Great sound. Waterfall it up. What about a 12 inch deep pool there? And all we're doing is with our shovels, pretending we're the water. And what would the water do in that situation? We, we eroded away the soil just like the water would in nature as that water comes over that, scouring this out. And then it gets shallower as it moves back through the stream. That curve back in there, and the water would move through a stream like this. It's usually eroded away the backside of the bank house, slowing down the water. So that water slows down quite a bit over there. I also like the depth of that pool. Not all the stream has to be two inches tall. Some of it can be six inches deep, four inches deep, two feet deep, whatever you want. That's what's fun and let your imagination go wild. Kind of look back up towards that stream. That water falls all the way back up in there. Come this way. Already started adding some of their pizzazz to the whole project. And then one of my favorite views, and they're gonna have to clean this up back over here and put a bench that is coming over this way. And then looking back up at that stream. Super shaded back in here. This feels great. Because it's now only 180 degrees. You guys want to see how I completely changed the front of this house? Right, guys we got a fun one the machines just showed up which means the guys are with them we've got a set of three stacked urns that we're gonna put in front of this house we've got an automatic fill valve going in we even have this downspout over here being run into it I think we'll do some kind of little dry stream bed to take it over into it we've got 11 lights this thing is gonna look so good when we get done small little reservoir down below we've only got nine aqua blocks but with an automatic fill valve we don't need any more it's gonna be look so cool and our customer even went out and got us a hand full of plants that we can play with. A little trick. Obviously, marking out the reservoir is not a trick, but you can tell that there's no possible way three stacked urns are gonna fit on that footprint. It's just impossible. You'd want a footprint at least three times the size to catch all the splash. So what we did is we're doing a smaller tank, but our liner will come all the way out to here, to here, to here, and back into there to allow us room to set some pretty big rocks in here, and more importantly, catch all the splash off of three urns. See the hole is dug. There's that depression just for the aqua blocks. And then you can see the over dig for all of the accent boulders going around it. The little depression for the vault right in there. Next is fabric liner. Let me give you guys a beat. Oh, let me show you guys. But first off, I'm going to show you guys the pathway going all the way around this and then this. So this turned out absolutely amazing. It was definitely a hot and brutal one today. A little bit longer than we thought it was going to take us today just because of the heat and everything. But it turned out absolutely amazing. I love how recessed that this feature looks. Whenever we see Fallon's Capes, we always see them that they're sometimes above grade here, which they just don't always look right because by the time you add rock and gravel, everything looks like man-made and it looks all nice and hot.
high, which we don't like that. I mean, obviously these urns are man-made, but the surrounding rocks look, make it look super natural and tie it all in, which I love these cobble beaches, what we do with this. Just take some granite, right? It's a 10-inch cobbles, and then we just landslide all this out into the patio. It's only one, two, three, four, five, six, eight rocks that we used all in here, and it turned out absolutely gorgeous. He has nine lights in here, so we have three lights up inside these urns. So one shines up on the bedroom up here. We have this light that shines up on this corner of the house, and then this urn here shines up on the garage, up on this wall. So at night, he's going to get an awesome glimmer on the walls, and it sounds absolutely amazing. Couldn't be more proud of the team. They did an absolute phenomenal job enduring the heat and everything, but we got her done, and off to the next one tomorrow. Ron has definitely been bit by the water gardening bug. Not only did we finish a project for him last week, and he's already landscaped it. We're back here putting in a stack slate urn. So this is where it's going to go. It is the perfect location, especially as you come down this driveway. It's the first thing you're going to see. Can't wait to see this finished with the lights and everything else. Then we'll come back this way. You're going to, oh, that was nice. And then, of course, they have this gorgeous garden back here. Just plants everywhere. And then he just finished landscaping this waterfall we built for him. Everything up here is dwarf. So there's butterfly bush. There's a little coral flower thing over there. Dwarf hydrangeas. It's just perfect. Tom looks like it's really cleared up. Just love how much this stream twists and turns. And then the pond is spotless. Our cool bridge. Fish are loving life. Well, can't wait to see what the guys do. This is actually our guys' first solo mission. They've already got an obstacle. I can't wait to see how they handle it. There's a drainage pipe sitting right in the center of everything. So hopefully they love the challenge and they just get after it. We'll see. All right, check in soon. All right, guys, I started the week and it was raining. I'm ending the week and it's raining. Man, that's how it goes. That time of year and that's just what happened. We needed the rain bad anyways. What a crazy week. I loved, 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 loved that stream. And how about the curb appeal of that other one? And now I'm back here in Downers Grove checking out the earth. And I'm not looking at the camera because I'm looking at what the guys created. And I have to tell you, I feel extremely, extremely proud. It looks perfect. It looks absolutely perfect. It's just such an awesome entrance that I think what I love about it the most is that it gives you kind of a little taste of what's about to come into the backyard. So let's spin this baby around and show you guys what the guys created. Hopefully you feel as proud as I do. How about that? So awesome. What I love, the big rocks, just enough room for plants. That little hydrangea on the side as it gets bigger and bigger. Again, this pagoda dogwood is a backdrop with the fence. They've even started decorating it with their little sun there. But perfect, nice gentle flow. They got the lights in the right spot. We got a light here, there, top there. Oh, it looks so good. I love that they've already got all their little decorations and stuff around it. It's so great. This is just going to look better and better over time. And I think my favorite part is the actual use of the big rocks. You could build this thing and it'd be simple and just do gravel and that'd be it. Wait for plants to come in there. But adding some of these rocks just adds so much more texture to the entire space. I think I'll sneak in the backyard really quick. I don't think anybody's home. Oh, it's a little early, but I can't help myself but to check on that pond back here. Let's just see how this looks. Oh, it looks so good already landscaped the heck out of it. Got this new bird feeder back in over here. Oh, he's been busy. Already getting quite a bit of algae in the stream. Kind of crazy. It's only been here a week. Fish look super happy. Look at the size of that big guy down there. Well, what an awesome, awesome week. I can't wait for next week. If I'm excited about next week, that means you guys should be super excited about next week. Next week is gonna be a blast. We got so much going on. We're back to my favorite job this year. And I keep saying that, but I know I don't mean it, right? Because they're all so cool. Like, look at how exciting that is. But we're back to that big job in Naperville. We're gonna be there for a long time, so we're gonna constantly be showing you guys updates on that. I'm going to Tennessee with The Pond Guy. We're gonna go check out John Adams, past artist of the year, I believe, 2000. 
2014-ish. He built his dream pond. Are you guys, I'm not kidding. I've seen the pictures. I am like crazy excited to go see that thing. I'm also checking out a garden center and a bunch of other ponds. So we've got a lot going on. A little nervous about leaving Jack, my little baby project over there. And I know Chris Hansen's got some stuff to share with us this week too. So a full week next week, you guys. Tell all your friends, pound that subscribe button down there, right? Like, come on guys, let's get some more subscriptions. Here we go. See you next week, bye.